Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is my Vermibag Mini. It's suspended within a wooden frame, and it's a pretty good sized bag system. And if you take a peek inside, you can see I've got plastic coverings right on top of the material that's within the bag. I'm not even using the zipper top that it comes with. I like just covering the material right up at the surface using plastic or paper or whatever seems to be the appropriate type of covering at the present time. You can even see there's a little stick sitting there diagonally across the top. I've got that same sort of stick marker right over here within another of my systems. These sticks are really just indicating to me not to feed these systems because they're in a state of foraging. And when I refer to foraging, to me that means the bins are not being fed. Kind of makes sense, right? The worms are basically left to pick through the material and find any little scraps of remaining bedding and food scraps, whatever they might be. And the idea is that they're going to, you know, reduce all that little tiny particle matter that's not yet castings into castings, hopefully leaving us with a batch of nothing other than castings, or at least close to that in theory. And in the case of these two systems, I'm really a little bit concerned about moisture. I just don't want to let things get too damp. And especially in this container here, I've got a, I got a feeling that it's time to remove the plastic covering. Right beneath that cardboard, there is plastic covering the system. And if it is getting a bit damp, I want to just remove the plastic, allow it to start airing out and get a little bit drier. In the Vermi Bag Mini, I suspect that things are probably pretty good from that perspective. But it's been a while since I checked in on these systems. It was a week ago when I last checked in on this one, but in this system, I haven't even looked in here in weeks now, so it's definitely due for a quick spot check. So let's get these out on the bench. I think we'll start with this bin over here, and we'll take a look at how things are progressing in these. So, the way I like to do sometimes, I've actually got some statistics and information written together on one of my little information boards that I like to put together sometimes for these videos because um, it is interesting to know certain details about the bin before we look at it to help put things into perspective and what we're looking at here is the 154 day old red wiggler bin and in this case it's been 27 days since the bin was last fed and I kept to that I was really good about that not so much with the vermi bag mini um, as you can see here, I was considering myself already 47 days ago as being in foraging mood with the Vermi Bag Mini, but over a couple moments of weakness, if you will, <laughs> um, up until as recently as 17 days ago, I actually did feed there, even though it's kind of like foraging with a little treat mixed in. So this is the um, this is the 154 day old bin. The the thing I was most concerned with here was I thought that there'd be just a little bit more moisture in here than is um, optimal. Because it does seem to me like, oh geez Louise, I might have to do something about this cardboard covering. It always seems to me like the cardboard is where these little insects like to hang out. And these are not one insect, these are almost all two insects. Connected to each other back to back mating actively mating here right in front of me <laughs> continuously increasing their numbers and i should really do something about that i think we might have to start with just eliminating the cardboard because i think the cardboard might have something to do with um, providing them with a little bit of a haven to hang out in in between those corrugated layers of uh, material so i uh i definitely like the way things look in this system a week ago when we last checked in at that time too we weren't here to feed or anything we were just curious to see how things were looking so at that point a week ago it had been 20 days since the bin was set to forage and i don't believe i had even checked it once during that time so after those original uh three weeks almost or so we we really had a huge amount of castings piled up on the top surface i wondered after a week what it would look like and it does look like they've done a, a very good job 
putting a fairly thin layer of fresh castings across the entire top of the system. And the foraging continues obviously with, with no fresh food added to a bin over the past 27 days now. The, um, the focus does turn to you know whatever else remains in the system. Certain things might have a chance at breaking down, other things like a little stick or whatever, hard, tough objects are clearly not going to break down. So it's um it's usually not ideal to try to shoot for 100% on you know getting a, a tub to go from bedding and food scraps and whatnot all the way to 100% castings. There is this sort of sweet spot I think, and I always tend to just overshoot it. <laughs> There's probably a sweet spot. A lot of people will tell you this too. I get a lot of this in my comments too, is to say, you know, hey, your your bin has not all been converted to castings yet, but you know, take what has out and um and then let the rest of it continue on. But if there's already fresh castings within your system, leaving them to sit for a really, really long time kind of exposes them to I think being ingested a second time. Or a third time over and over because worms can re-eat their castings many times over and I think each time that happens the material becomes more and more fine a lot of people refer to it as silty Ooh, wow and any little bit of moisture makes that really fine material tend to clump up a lot and we might already be at that stage here you know I'll, I'll admit that I, I don't run perfect worm bins in fact I probably um, have the most imperfect worm bins <laughs> or maybe it's just my tendency to try to just you know focus on the, those issues to see if we could find simple answers and resolutions to simple problems and a lot of times the problems aren't even that simple you know it seems simple but figuring out what to do about it may not be as simple and straightforward as it seems so you can see this material is heavily populated I've referred to it re, um, repeatedly as probably my most heavily populated system and um, at this point that nice plastic covering that we took off earlier which is causing all of this moisture to just stay locked in this material rather than letting it air out we're, we're not going to be putting that back in fact I've got a, a perfect solution I think for this I started using Tyvek Tyvek is that stuff you see you see the word all the time as you drive past a new house being built that um that vapor barrier material that they sheathe the outside of the, the construction with before they put the siding on or whatever is going to be covering the outer surface. A lot of times you see the the material name printed right onto that that outer coating and it's it's also the material that they make you know FedEx mailing bags out of or US Postal Service bags. Um, so that's actually where mine came from. Instead of throwing the bag away, when I received a package through the U.S. Mail in one of their priority envelopes, I set the bag aside. And if you read the fine print, you can see that the material that it's made up made of is um, is Tyvek. And I, I originally thought that it might do really well in terms of helping, sort of mimic what the plastic coverings on my bins do, which is to keep the water vapor within the system, not let it evaporate out. But it's it's actually designed to allow gaseous materials to pass through. So once the water does vaporize and turn to um, gas state, basically it does go right through the Tyvek. <laughs> so Tyvek to me seems um, possibly no, no better than um, just a straight old piece of newspaper or something covering the top of your bin. Um, I guess in terms of how much moisture it allows to go through itself. I thought that it would do a much better job. It turns out that the stuff is actually um, waterproof, so it does not allow moisture in its um, liquid form to pass through. So like a new, new construction, it won't let rain you know, come in, even if it's really windy and it would want to push the rain into the structure or um, into the house. It prevents the moisture from making its way into the house right there at that outer level which makes a lot of sense but it does allow for breathability basically and it's cool kind of a cool interesting substance and I've got it covering one of my newer red wiggler bins and in that case I I guess I made that observation 
most recently when I was in that bin and it felt to me like the material in that bin was drying out a little bit too quickly and it did seem because the coverings were not really providing the uh, resistance to evaporation and moisture loss. So uh, I'm thinking that that piece of Tyvek might actually be the perfect solution to have on top of this bin. And in that bin, maybe I'm actually losing more moisture than I want. Maybe I could just use the plastic covering from this one over there. I'll just do a quick swap. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I think the other thing that I just did here too, which was just basically till up the material and aerate it, I think that that also helps a lot with the drying of the material. So it is time, I believe, to let this material start drying off. Let it, um, let it start shedding some of its moisture through evaporation so the plastic's not going to be replaced. We'll probably put the Tyvek on. I'm even thinking maybe Tyvek alone might be allowing for too much evaporation. Maybe not. It's worth a try, right? Um, the other thing I always feel to um, feel compelled to do when I'm in these bins that I'm trying to drive towards harvest is to pick out these larger chunks of stuff. I know if I'm harvesting soon, then I don't want my harvested finished castings to be littered with large chunks of residual bedding or food items or whatever. So I'll pick those out, relocate those chunks to, you know, newer bins where there's going to be more time for the stuff to break down. Because a lot of the stuff's definitely in progress, as you can see. There's a worm munching on whatever this is. It's actually kind of a tough item. It's probably the shell of a seed or something. So, uh, you know, this will be better in a you know bin where it can continue breaking down as opposed to um, you know being harvested with the castings so each time I come into these bins I pluck out whatever I stumble on as I'm probing through the material inspecting it and then toss it into one of my newer bins maybe the bin that we're removing the Tyvek from can be the um, the recipient of today's <laughs> salvaged food bits so I'm definitely bumping into other things down in here, but um, I'm not going to go crazy picking through. I think we've aerated the material nicely. I'm just kind of trying to get it a little bit level, but you can see there's a lot of texture to this. You know, it's all bumpy and wavy. I bet if we left it a couple weeks, the, the worm traffic on the top surface would fill it back in with fresh castings. Although now, now that we're driving towards dryness, this top material could get a little bit hard and dry and a little bit un unpalatable from the worms perspective in terms of hanging out on the top surface so the top surface might not actually see as much traffic as uh as we've been seeing here with the plastic in place you know what i'm gonna go grab that tyvek from the other bin and we'll uh we'll position it here in the meantime we'll let these little wormies squirm out of view So as you can see, this is a, an old envelope. I cut, I cut off a piece of it, I believe, over here, or maybe not. Maybe I haven't had a chance to trim this. This might be the entire envelope. Um, but it does seem to fit pretty well across the top. Um, at this point, usually I try to put some sort of a barrier between my top covering and the material below. But I think we're just going to go like this and give this a pretty good chance at drying off. The bin that I just removed this from, you can feel the surface right beneath where it was is a little bit um, a little bit dry. That's probably the same effect we'll have here. The plastic that was covering this before, I'm going to put it on that bin. Let them sort of swap coverings. But um, let's let this continue. I guess we're bringing over a few little mites too, as well as some this and that. Doesn't matter. We're going to go check in on the vermi bag next. And I'm curious to see how things look in there. It's been a while since I saw what was happening there. So it'll be cool. Let's head over there now. So now down here in the vermi bag mini, the stick basically reminding me don't feed. <laughs> Not that I really need the reminder, but just little visual distinctions from one bin to the next. It's almost just like the, I don't know, not sure what to relate it to. I don't know why there's this heavy weight to this bag. 
feels like it's got a bunch of worms in it or something. <laughs> yeah, it does. What the heck? On a couple occasions, I've seen worms crawling into the bags that I use as coverings. But I don't think I've seen that before, where you get a whole bunch of them <laughs> mobbing the inside of a bag. It might be better for these bags not to be bags. It would be, be a little bit more predictable to know that you're not going to have worms within <laughs> your bags. So these were all the little guys that seem to find interest in the plastic bag. I can't say I've seen that before. I wonder what it could have been. And I kind of lost track of which corner it was. I guess it was probably the corner where there's an opening in the bag, right? It makes sense. Probably doesn't have anything to do with one specific corner of the bin. It's been a long time since I checked in on this bin. Very long time. Little scraps of stuff. At this point, you know, I'm, I'm tracking towards day 700. So this bin, or bag, sorry, it's being 682 days of age. I'm, you know, only uh, 18 days away from harvesting. Less than three weeks. And I'm wondering how that last feeding is doing. I, I made mention of the fact that, you know, 47 days I've been considering this bin has technically been sort of foraging, but yeah, on a couple of, a couple of occasions, I just sort of broke down in moments of weakness and gave the bin some food, even though it was technically, you know, foraging. Sometimes it's just fun to break your own rules, but I don't know why, but I just probably had a little bit of extra leftover kitchen scraps or something that I just needed a place to put it, and this seemed like a good place where there was probably a bunch of hungry mouths to feed that would appreciate it <laughs> so you can tell this material has a much more crumbly kind of um texture to it as i make my way inwards where it's a little bit more damp it's it's clumping up a bit more but the stuff out on the very edge you know is, is pretty much flowing right through my fingers for the most part here and there i guess something that doesn't flow through might be a, a scrap of food here and there you know I think that's pretty normal to find in your bins in most cases depending on how you've got stuff set up this is this is meant to be a continuous flow through system though and since I keep stirring everything up I, th I don't think I'm getting the exact type of performance from it as you would normally get normally you would just not keep tilling up stuff you would just leave it down low and hopefully it would get broken up I don't know even though I've been running this system for a long long time now <laughs> many hundreds of days i um i still have never harvested it from the bottom i've never opened up that escape hatch on the bottom and <laughs> harvested castings i've always just treated it kind of like a big bucket so all right not much to do in here i just wanted to see how things were progressing the last feeding gosh again i'm just sort of remembering it vaguely i think so don't hold me to this but i believe the last feeding was you know, definitely intended to be material that they'd be able to break down pretty quickly. So it was some of the stuff that was pulverized in a food processor. And I had just not even smeared it up or broken it into little chunks. I think I had a pretty good sized piece that I broke into like three pretty nice sized chunks. And just kind of stuck them right on the surface. But I think after all that time, we're not going to find any remnants of that. Just the castings left behind in its place. So interesting system i look forward to harvesting it and then too i think the harvest is not going to be the type of harvest that a, a typical flow through system gets <laughs> it's going to be a pretty much an emptying of this the materials so that this the whole bag could be refitted differently for another new run rather than just having it perpetually go so breaking all the rules using the flow through system as just a big bucket basically maybe the next go around really should be um you know uh, another attempt at setting the bin up but this time in a way that you know just gets used and eventually harvested the way it was intended to be all right i think things look really good in here this is really where i'm you know wanting to be right now in terms of texture i even moved in some of the drier stuff from the outside edge down into the middle so that stuff can Possibly dry out a little bit more, but not too much. That's why we're just going to stick with the, the plastic coverings here. They're doing a really good job. In fact, even providing the worms with like a little bit of a hangout for whatever reason, they're just finding it interesting to be within the bags. So, sure, why not? Go for it. 
I wonder if they'll be in there next time we check. All right, everyone, that's it. Quick check in on my two foraging systems. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. Have a great day. Bye.